Publius Papinius Statius, c. 45 c. 96 AD was a Roman poet of the 1st century AD Silver Age of Latin literature. His surviving Latin poetry includes an epic in twelve books, the The Bade, a collection of occasional poetry, the Silvi, and an unfinished epic, the Achilleid. He is also known for his appearance as a guide in the purgatory section of Dante's epic poem, The Divine Comedy. Life Topic. Family background Information about Statius' life is almost entirely drawn from his Sylvie and a mention by the satirist Juvenal. He was born to a family of greco campanian origin. His Roman cognomen suggests that at some time an ancestor of his was freed and adopted the name of his former master, although neither Statius nor his father were slaves. The poet's father whose name is unknown, was a native of Velia but later moved to Naples and spent time in Rome where he taught with marked success. From boyhood to adulthood, Statius' father proved himself a champion in the poetic contests at Naples in the Augustalia and in the Nemean, Pythian, and Isthmian games, which served as important events to display poetic skill during the early empire. Statius declares in his lament for his father SILV, 5.3 that his father was in his time equal to any literary task, whether in prose or verse. He mentioned Mavania, and may have spent time there, or been impressed by the confrontation of Vitellius and Vespasian in 69. Statius' father was a Roman equi, but may have lost his status because of money troubles. At Naples, he was a teacher of Greek and Roman literature who attracted many pupils who were destined for religious offices in Rome. He died in 79 AD. From Pliny the Younger's letters, it has recently been deduced that Statius also wrote under the pseudonym of Propertius. <inaudible> <inaudible> Birth and career Less is known of the events of Statius' life. He was born c. 45 AD. From his boyhood he was victorious in poetic contests many times at his native Naples and three times at the Alban Festival, where he received the golden crown from the hand of the emperor Domitian who had instituted the contest. For the Alban Festival, Statius composed a poem on the German and Dacian campaigns of Domitian which Juvenal lampoons in his seventh satire. Statius is thought to have moved to Rome c. 90 after his father's death where he published his acclaimed epic poem The The Bade c. 92. In the capital, Statius seems to have made many connections among the Roman aristocracy and court, and he was probably supported through their patronage. Statius produced the first three books of occasional poetry, his Silvi, which were published in 93, which sketch his patrons and acquaintances of this period and mention his attendance at one of Domitian's Saturnalia banquets. He competed in the Great Capitoline competition, although it is not known in what year, although 94 has been suggested. Statius failed to win the coveted prize, a loss he took very hard. The disappointment may have prompted his return to Naples around 94, the home of his youth. In existence is a poem he addressed to his wife, Claudia, the widow of a famous singer who had a musically talented daughter by her first husband, on this occasion SILV, 3.5. Later years at Naples Statius' first three books of the Silvi seem to have received some criticism, and in response he composed a fourth book at Naples, which was published in 95. During this period at Naples, Statius maintained his relations with the court and his patrons, earning himself another invitation to a palace banquet SILV, 4.2. He seems to have taken an interest in the marriage and career of his stepdaughter and he also took a young slave boy under his wing, as he was childless, who died c. 95. In that same year Statius embarked on a new epic, the Achilleid, giving popular recitations of his work Juv. only to complete a book and a half before dying in 95, leaving the poem unfinished. His fifth book of Silvi were published after his death c. 96. Topic. Works As a poet, Statius was versatile in his abilities and contrived to represent his work as Ocean. Taught by his educated father, Statius was familiar with the breadth of classical literature and displayed his learning in his poetry which is densely elusive and has been described as elaborate and mannerist. 
He was able to compose in hexameter, hendecasyllable, alcaic and sapphic meters, to produce deeply researched and highly refined epic and polished impromptu pieces, and to treat a variety of themes with the dazzling rhetorical and poetic skill that inspired the support of his patrons and the emperor. Some of Statius' works, such as his poems for his competitions, have been lost. He is recorded as having written an agave mime, and a four line fragment remains of his poem on Domitian's military campaigns, the De Bello Germanico composed for the Alban Games in the Scholia to Juvenal 4.94. The Thebaid Based on Statius' own testimony, the Thebaid was written c. ADC. 92 AD, beginning when the poet was around 35, and the work is thought to have been published in 91 or 92. The poem is divided into twelve books in imitation of Virgil's Aeneid and is composed in dactylic hexameter. In the Silvi, Statius speaks of his extensive work in polishing and revising the Thebaid and his public recitations of the poem. From the epilogue it seems clear that Statius considered the Thebaid to be his magnum opus and believed that it would secure him fame for the future. In the poem, Statius follows Virgil closely as a model in the epilogue he acknowledges his debt to Virgil, but he also refers to a wide range of sources in his handling of meter and episodes. The poem's theme is the myth of the Seven Against Thebes, the story of the battle between the sons of Oedipus for the throne of Thebes. The poem opens book one with the disgraced Oedipus curse on his two sons, Aetiocles and Polynices, who have decided to hold the throne of Thebes in alternate years, one ruling, the other in exile. Jupiter plans a war between Thebes and Argos, although Juno begs him not to incite it. Polynices in exile fights with Tydeus, another exile at Adrastus' palace, the two are entertained and marry Adrastus' daughters. In Book II, Tydeus goes to Aetiocles to ask him to lay down the throne and yield power, but he refuses and tries to kill Tydeus with an ambush. Tydeus slaughters the Thebans and escapes to Argos, causing Adrastus and Polynices to declare war on Thebes Book III. In the fourth book the Argive forces gather, commanded by the seven champions Adrastus, Polynices, Amphiaris, Caponius, Parthenopius, Hippomedon, and Tydeus and march to Thebes, but at Nemea, Bacchus causes a drought. The army meets Hypsipyl who shows them a spring then tells them the story of the women of Lemnos book five. While she is speaking, her ward, Ephelts, is killed by a snake. In book six, the Argives perform games for the dead child, instituting the Nemean games. In 7, Jupiter urges the Argives to march on Thebes where battle breaks out during which Amphiaris is swallowed in the earth. In 8, Tydeus, wounded and dying, kills Melanippus and eats his head. A battle over his body leads to the death of Hippomedon and Parthenopius book 9. In 10, Juno causes sleep to overcome the Thebans and the Argives slaughter many in the camp. Menetius sacrifices himself to save Thebes and Jupiter kills the wicked Caponius with a thunderbolt. In 11, Polynices and Aetiocles join in single combat and kill each other, Jocasta kills herself and Creon assumes power, forbidding burial of the Argive dead. In the final book, the Argive widows go to Athens to ask Theseus to force Creon to allow their husband's burial while Argia, Polynices' wife, burns him illicitly. Theseus musters an army and kills Creon. The debate ends with an epilogue in which the poet prays that his poem will be successful, cautions it not to rival the Aeneid, and hopes that his fame will outlive him. Modern critics of the debate have been divided over interpretations of the epic's tone. Earlier critics in the 19th and 20th century considered the poem a piece of elaborate flattery that vindicated the regime of Domitian, however, more recent scholars have viewed the poem as a subversive work that criticizes the authoritarianism and violence of the Flavians by focusing on extreme violence and social chaos. Statius' use of allegory in the debate and his abstract treatment of the gods has been seen as an important innovation in the tradition of classical poetry which ushered in medieval conventions. Finally, although earlier scholars criticized the style of the poem as episodic, current scholars have noted the subtlety and skill with which Statius organizes and controls his narrative and description. Topic: The Silvi. The Silvi were probably composed by Statius between 89 to 96 AD. The first three books seem to have been published together after 93 AD, Book 4 was probably released in 95 AD, and Book 5 is thought to have been released posthumously c. 96. The title of the collection, Silvi meaning, forest, or raw material, 
was used to describe the draft of a poet's work which was composed impromptu in a moment of strong inspiration and which was then revised into a polished, metrical poem. This suggests that the Sylvie are revised, impromptu pieces of occasional poetry which were composed in the space of a few days' time. There are 32 poems in the collection, almost all with a dedicate, divided into five books, each with a dedicatory epistle. Of nearly 4,000 lines which the books contain, more than five sixths are hexameters. Four of the pieces are written in the hendecasyllabic meter, and there is one alcaic and one sapphic ode. The subjects of the Sylvie vary widely. Five poems are devoted to the emperor and his favorites, including a description of Domitian's equestrian statue in the Forum 1.1, praise for his construction of the Via Domitiana 4.3, and a poem on the dedication of the hair of Irenus, a eunuch favorite of Domitian's, to a shrine of Aesculapius 3.4. Six are lamentations for deaths or consolations to survivors, including the highly personal poems on the death of Statius' father and his foster son 5.3.5. The poems on loss are particularly notable in the collection and range from consolations on the death of wives 3.3 to pieces on the death of a favorite parrot 2.4 and a lion in the arena 2.5. Another group of the Sylvie give picturesque descriptions of the villas, gardens, and artworks of the poet's friends. In these we have a more vivid representation than elsewhere of the surroundings Roman aristocrats of the empire lived in the country. Important examples include a piece on Polius's temple to Hercules 3.1, the etiology of the tree at Atedia's villa 2.3, an antique statue of Lysippus Heracles 4.6, and a description of Polius's villa at Sorrentum 2.2. The rest of the Sylvie consist of congratulatory addresses to friends and poems for special occasions such as the wedding poem for Stella and Violentilla 2.2, the poem commemorating the poet Lucan's birthday 2.7, and a joking piece to Plotius Grippus on a Saturnalia gift 4.9. As with the Thebaid, Statius' relationship to Domitian and his court caused him to fall out of favor with critics and readers, but in recent times, the Sylvie have been rehabilitated by scholars. Domitian is an important presence in the Sylvie, and many of the poems appear to flatter the emperor and court. The content of the Sylvie is primarily dictated by the needs of Statius patrons, and many of the addressees come from the wealthy, privileged class of landowners and politicians. Statius' flattery of these elites has been interpreted in two ways by scholars. Some maintain that the collection is highly subversive and is a subtle criticism of Domitian and the Roman aristocracy. Others urge a reading of the Sylvie as individual pieces that respond to specific circumstances with their own unique viewpoints. Topic: The Achilleid. A fragment of his epic poem on the life of Achilles, the Achilleid, is also extant, consisting of one book and a few hundred lines of a second. What was completed of this poem was composed between 94 to 95 AD based on Sylvie 4.7.21 FF. Statius records that there were recitations of the poem. It is thought that Statius' death in 95 is the reason that the poem remains unfinished. In the first book, Thetis, having foreknowledge of her son's death in the Trojan War, attempts to hide Achilles on the island of Syros by dressing him up as a girl. On the island, Achilles falls in love with Didamia and forces her to have sex with him. Ulysses arrives to recruit Achilles for the war effort and reveals his identity. In the second book, Ulysses and Achilles depart and Achilles gives an account of his early life and tutelage by the centaur Chiron. The poem breaks off at the end of his speech. In general, scholars have remarked on the markedly different tone of the Achilleid in comparison with the Thebaid, equating it more to the style of Ovid than Virgil. Some have also noted the predominance of feminine themes and feminine power in the fragment and focus on the poem's perspectives on gender relations. <laughs> Statius' influence and literary afterlife Statius' poetry was very popular in his lifetime, although he was not without his critics who apparently had problems with his extempore style. Juvenal is thought to extensively lampoon Statius' type of court poetry in his fourth satire on the turbot of Domitian, but he also mentions the immense popularity of Statius' recitations in satire 7.82 ff. In late antiquity, the Thebaid which was by then a classic received a commentary by a Lactantius Placidus. Throughout the Middle Ages, the Thebaid remained a popular text, inspiring a 12th-century French romance and works by Boccaccio and Chaucer. 
Statius' development of allegory helped establish the importance of that technique in medieval poetry. In the Renaissance, the Silvi, thanks to Poliziano, helped inspire an entire genre of collections of miscellaneous, occasional poetry called Silvae which remained popular throughout the period, inspiring works by Hugo Grotius and John Dryden. Dante mentions Statius in De Vulgari Eloquentia along with Ovid, Virgil, and Lucan as one of the four Regulata Poetae e. v. 7. In Divina Commedia, Dante and Virgil are caught up with Statius as they leave the fifth terrace reserved for the avaricious and the prodigal and enter the sixth reserved for the gluttonous. Statius' redemption is heard in Canto XX the mountain trembles and the penitent souls cry out, Gloria in excelsis Deo, and he joins Dante and Virgil in Canto 21. He then ascends Mount Purgatory with them and stays with Dante in the earthly paradise at the mountain summit, after Virgil has returned to Limbo. He is last mentioned in Canto 33, making him one of the longest recurring characters in the comedy, fourth to Dante, Virgil and Beatrice. He is not mentioned in Paradise, though he presumably ascends like Dante. Dante appears to claim that Statius was a secret convert to Christianity as a result of his reading of Virgil, although his conversion is not attested in any historical source. A 2012 study dedicated to Dante's writing of Statius's relation to Christianity has shown the significance of the fact that Dante does not state that Statius ever converted to Christianity, but that his Neapolitan predecessor let himself be baptized by Christians. In Restoration England, John Dryden wrote a poem entitled To Sir Robert Howard. That refers to Statius Achilleid. Dryden criticizes Statius' unfinished epic, calling it too bold. Topic Notes Topic References Newlands, Carol, twenty twelve. Statius, Poet Between Rome and Naples. Classical Literature and Society. London, Bristol Classical Press. Vesey, David, nineteen seventy three. Statius and the Debate. Cambridge, UK, Cambridge Univ. Press. Topic. Editions David R. Slavit, T.R., Broken Columns, Two Roman Epic Fragments, The Achilleid of Publius Papinius Statius and the Rape of Proserpine of Claudius Claudianus, with an afterword by David Constant Philadelphia, University of Pennsylvania Press, 1997. Betty Rose Nagel, The Sylvie of Statius. Translated with Notes and Introduction Bloomington, in, Indiana University Press, 2004. Carla F. L. Palman, Statius, The Bade 12, Introduction, Text, and Commentary, Studien zur Geschichte und Kultur des Altertums. Neue Folge, 1. Rehi, Band 25, Paderborn, Ferdinand Schoening, 2004. Gibson, Bruce, Statius. Sylvie 5. Edited with Introduction, Translation and Commentary, Oxford Classical Monographs, Oxford, Oxford University Press, 2006. Jane Wilson Joyce, ed. Statius. The Bade, A Song of Thebes, Ithaca, Cornell University Press, 2008. Masters of Latin Literature. Pavan, Alberto, ed. Trans. Com. La Guerra della Quadra e il Gioco della Guerra, Saggio di Commento a P. Papini Stasi The Bados Liber v. 238-549, Minima Philologica 6, Alessandria, Edizioni dell'Orso, 2009. Topic. Studies Andriacchio, M. Dante's Statius and Christianity, a reading of Purgatorio 21 and 22 in their poetic context. Interpretation, A Journal of Political Philosophy Vol. 39-1, 2012, pp. 55-82. Phantom, E. Chironis Exemplum, on Teachers and Surrogate Fathers in Achilleid and Sylvie, Hermathena 167 1999, 59-70. Feeney, D. Tenui, Leighton's Discrimin, Spotting the Differences in Statius Achilleid, Material i.e. Discussioni per l'analisi dei testi classici 52 85-106. Ganabin, Randall T. 2007. Statius and Virgil, The Debate and the Reinterpretation of the Aeneid. Cambridge, UK, Cambridge Univ. Press. Hardy, A. Statius and the Sylvie Liverpool, 1983. Heslin, P. J. 
The Transvestite Achilles, Gender and Genre in Statius Achilleid Cambridge, 2005. Johansson, N. Dichter über Ihre Gedichte, die Prosivoreden in den Epigrammaten Libri Marshals und in den Sylvie de Statius, Hypomnemata, 166 Gatingen, Vandenheck and Ruprecht, 2006. Lewis, C. S. Dante's Statius, Studies in Medieval and Renaissance Literature Cambridge, 1966. Lovett, H. Statius and Epic Games, Sport, Politics, and Poetics in the The Bade, Cambridge Classical Studies Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 2005. McNellis, Charles, 2002. Greek Grammarians and Roman Society During the Early Empire, Statius' Father and His Contemporaries, Classical Antiquity 21-67-94. McNellis, Charles, 2007. Statius the Bade and the Poetics of Civil War. Cambridge, UK, Cambridge Univ. Press. Mendelssohn, D. Empty Nest, Abandoned Cave, Maternal Anxiety in Achilleid 1, Clant 9.2 1990, 295-308. Newlands, Carroll, 2012. Statius, Poet Between Rome and Naples. Classical Literature and Society. London, Bristol Classical Press. Newlands, C. Statius Sylvie and the Poetics of Empire, Cambridge, 2002. Shackleton Bailey, D. R. Statius Sylvie, Cambridge, Mass., London, 2003. Vesey, David, 1973. Statius and the The Bade. Cambridge, UK, Cambridge Univ. Press. Topic external links Works by Statius at Perseus Digital Library Statius, J. H. Mosley, ed., Tuvol, London, William Heinemann Limited, New York, G. P. Putnam's Sons, 1928, Volume 1, Volume 2. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed., 1911. Statius, Publius Papinius. Encyclopedia Britannica. 25, 11th ed. Cambridge University Press pp. 811-812. Lactantius Placidus in Stati the Beta Commentum, Volume 1, R. D. Sweeney, ed., Stuttgartier et Lipsiae, in Aetibus B. G. Teubnery, 1997. Online text, Statius, the Bait and Achilleid translated by J. H. Mosley online text, Statius, the Bait, Achilleid and Sylvie, Latin, S-O-R-G-L-L, Statius, Thebes I. 46-87, read by Stephen Dates.